So by now you should have a better understanding of how Cisco Umbrella DNS policies work and some things you can do to troubleshoot. In this particular lab walkthrough, what we're going to do is we're just going to spend a little bit of time on the policies themselves. And we're going to be looking at the bypassing of users when a block page is presented and how we can set that up as well. So to do that, the first thing we need to do is we need to navigate to our Umbrella instance. And then once on logged in, we need to navigate to policies, DNS policies. And as you can see, we have our one default policy configured. What we're going to do is we're just going to add in a new DNS policy for this lab walkthrough. So we'll just leave all the default settings as they are. We'll just quickly run through these. And we're just going to specify our identity as our lab network. There we go. And that's just going to ensure that we match on this when we're testing. So we'll go to next and we want to leave our security settings as they are. So we, we're going to block malware, command and control callbacks and phishing attacks. That's fine. And then with the content access, let's just say, let's change this to custom. Now for this example, what we'll do is we'll actually block social uh, networking. So we can see we've got social networking here. We'll just block this uh, by default. And let's go to our next one now. Now with cont uh, control applications, we'll just leave this as it is under default settings. We're not going to change anything here. And it's important to point out that when we're looking at bypassing block screens, we cannot use bypass codes and, and things f uh, like that. So the bypass codes or users cannot bypass applications that are blocked using the uh, application control. So if you block it on here and you receive a block page and you don't have the option to bypass, then that's probably going to be the reason why, because the application control is uh, blocking the application as opposed to if we just step back to the previous one where we're limiting the access to content this is where you can actually specify what should be blocked by default but then should be required if we have a bypass code or bypass users so that's one important thing to know so we'll just proceed with uh we'll, we'll just turn this off here we don't want to have anything configured there We'll leave the global allow and block list. We'll leave file inspection. Um, now we get to the block pages and this part's important. So if we just preview the block page here, this is what users are going to be presented with for anything that's blocked. So you can see here we have a uh, number of things that are blocked. So again, anything that's blocked, this page is going to appear for this policy. This is what we're going to set. Now we have two options here. We've got bypass users and we also have bypass codes that we can use. So what we've got, we could see some codes here, but what we'll do is we'll create a new one and we'll first, um, once we've done that, we'll take a look at where we can actually set these users uh, or configure these users as well as where, where we can find these bypass codes as well and actually remove them. So let's just create a new bypass code. We'll focus on this now. And we have an option to bypass everything or bypass specific categories and destination lists that are apl applicable depending on the policy that's created. We'll just leave this as bypass everything. If you do want to bypass specific application uh, categories and destination lists, then we could drop down into the categories and, and go through that. Or similarly with the destination list, we could go down that route. But we'll leave it as bypass everything. And we'll set an expiry date for the end of the day and we'll save that and now you can see that our bypass code lab is selected and will be applied to this policy that we're creating we don't have any users we can create users here if we wanted to so you can create a new um 
user description and then the bypass users that are in here are users that are configured in umbrella none of those are relevant and the same applies for bypass everything or bypass specific categories as well i'll show you where you actually create these users because you can't create the actual user here you do need to make sure that the user's created before um, actually configuring this as well so we'll just cancel out of that and we'll focus on bypass codes for this particular lab walkthrough and then once we're done we'll just give this a uh, a name so we'll say bypass policy and we'll save that so we're essentially by, uh, by default now blocking for our lab network we're blocking social networking but we have configured a bypass code so that should we hand out that bypass code anybody with that bypass code will be able to get through and access any social networking websites so this is really cool because what it allows us to do is if you have by default a policy that should be applied all the time but then yet maybe have an event where you want to allow access to say social networking applications this is a great thing because it allows us to then just create a bypass code that we can hand out to let's say our guests if we're having an event and we want to allow access to social networking we can hand this bypass code or display this bypass code somewhere so that users can still get onto social networking websites and then after that expiry date it goes back to how the policy was before with uh, no access um, if that bypass code expires so this is really good because it allows us to create that sort of allowance for accessing particular categories without actually modifying the whole policy or the different policy sets as well so we've got this bypass policy configured now and just before we actually test this let's just go down to admin here and if we go to user roles you can see that we have a default user role called block page bypass and this role gives the users the ability to bypass pages that are typically blocked. So this is the user one that we'll, we're just taking a look at. Not the bypass codes, but the user one. So what we do is those users are created within our Umbrella instance. So those users, you'd go to accounts. And then you'd add a new user like this. And then you'd enter their email address and select their user role so we can see block page bypass here and then once that user successfully uh, accesses or confirms their account with a password then they should be able to use that bypass setting providing they are configured to uh, bypass as well you can see bypass users or bypass users that are configured if you navigate to bypass users we don't have any in here at the moment and you can also see bypass codes as well so if we click on bypass codes under admin you can see the different bypass codes we've got and we can see which policies they're applied to and when they expire as well as the uh, codes as well so you can see the one that we created here in the middle and we can see that it expires at the end of the day and we can also see which policy is applied to we can also remove the old ones so let's just remove these two old ones here that we don't need we just simply delete those and there we're good so what we'll do now is we will take note of this bypass code here as you can see 4kx4t we'll copy that and let's just try to navigate to a social networking website so let's maybe say pinterest let's give that a go and there you go you can see that this site is blocked we cannot access this site but because we have it configured to bypass we have a little drop down box here that says administrative bypass so if we have a username and password that's configured in umbrella we could and if it's configured in the policy we can use that to to access or to bypass this block to access pinterest.co.uk 
if we don't, which in our case we don't, but we do know the bypass code, we could use the bypass code. So let's paste in the bypass code like this and let's see what happens now when we click bypass. Now you see we are now signed in and we can continue browsing to Pinterest. So let's click on that now. There you go. So we get a little pop up saying that we have bypassed and when the code expires, Let's just close that and now you can see we've got access to the Pinterest. So if we click on the other links like business, say for instance, you can see that we can still access that. If we look at the certificate, we can see that the common name is Pinterest. And we can see actually the organization, if we go to details, we can see what certificate we're using here. So we can see that we're using the umbrella root CA here as well. Now, if we navigate back to our umbrella instance here, and we just go to, let's go to reports and we go to activity search. And I've got some traffic running through loads of different stuff here, but you can see here one time here. So we've got, the block here on Pinterest. So let's see full details. So we can see the, the lab network. We can see the destination as well. We can see that it's social networking as well. We've got our public IP address that we're using. So we get some nice information that we can look at here with regards to it being blocked. If we actually click on to pinterest.co.uk with an umbrella, we can see that we've had a number of requests from the lab network identity. We can see sort of how many have been allowed and how many have been blocked. The latest one that we're focusing on here is at the, at the end. And we have some more information here with regards to when it's being blocked and when it's being allowed as well. In this case, we've just got the, the blocks. So that's simply how we can allow users to bypass block pages either by using bypass codes as you've just seen in this lab walkthrough or by using bypass users which are configured in umbrella